Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to K-Native and review its background and history, what motivated its creation, its two core components, serving and eventing, and when and where you should consider using it yourself. To begin with, K-Native is a Kubernetes-based serverless framework, which originated out of Google. Over time, additional support and contributions have been made by other vendors, such as Red Hat, IBM, and Pivotal. Now, the main idea and initiative driving Knative is that it combines two very popular concepts, serverless together with container orchestration in the form of Kubernetes. To understand why fusing serverless into Kubernetes is such a good thing, I'll first briefly rewind and discuss each by itself. Serverless is a popularized operating model predominantly for the cloud in which execution environments are dynamically provisioned just before the triggered serverless workload is executed, ensuring that the execution and billing time, often measured in milliseconds, runs for the minimal amount of time, just enough to allow the execution to complete. When it comes to implementation, the serverless unit of deployment is typically a block of code. That is, you ship and deploy functions. The serverless platform or framework will more than likely use containers to host and run these functions, ensuring functions can launch quickly and execute in isolation. Containers are a lightweight, standalone, portable, executable package. Various pre-built containers with specific runtime engines and or software frameworks are used to host and execute these functions. You'll often see larger serverless designs using an eventing model to provide triggering and message passing capabilities. Events are used to trigger individual functions, passing messages between each other using the pub sub pattern. Key benefits attributed to the serverless approach are, one, no server management is necessary. Two, you only pay for the execution time. Three, they can scale to zero, no demand, nothing runs, equals no cost. Four, serverless functions are stateless. This promotes scalability. Five, reduced operational overhead and costs. Examples of cloud-hosted serverless services are AWS's Lambda Functions, Azure's Azure Functions, and GCP's Cloud Functions. So let's now take a look at Kubernetes and discuss its background and merits. Kubernetes, also originating out of Google, is widely considered to be the most popular container orchestrator and scheduler around at the moment. Kubernetes has gained significant industry adoption, being used by most enterprises to host their own containerized workloads at scale. Kubernetes provides a cluster-based platform into which you deploy workloads in deployment units called pods. A pod is the smallest unit of deployment, or building block, and consists of one or multiple containers. When building applications for Kubernetes, you declare the required state of your application in a number of manifest files which are then loaded into the cluster. The cluster scheduler and orchestrator then have the responsibility of provisioning and maintaining the declared state within the cluster, resulting in the distribution of pods across the cluster's worker nodes. Kubernetes has done a fantastic job of abstracting away and hiding the underlying cluster infrastructure and related networking. As an architect or developer, your only responsibility is to build container images and then deploy them into the cluster, declaring the necessary cluster resources, such as pods, deployments, services, etc. This is really what Kubernetes excels at, providing a platform that schedules and orchestrates containers. Therefore, in summary, Kubernetes is a general purpose container management system that automates the deploying, managing, and scaling of your containerized applications. Now, what Kubernetes doesn't set out to address specifically is serverless and event-driven architectures, but it can provide some of the required building blocks to enable serverless deployments. Let's see how. Enter Knative. Knative is a serverless event-driven framework which is deployed directly into Kubernetes, enabling Kubernetes to support serverless event-driven deployments and workloads. With Knative installed into Kubernetes, your cluster gets supercharged and can support not only long-running microservice-based workloads, but can now also support event-driven and short-lived scale-to-zero serverless workloads. Knative combines many of the existing native Kubernetes operations and resources together into a set of higher-level primitives, 
which help developers to be more productive and self-sufficient. Knative is composed of two distinct components, serving and eventing. These two components are most often installed together, but can be installed independently of each other if required. I'll review both of these components individually in the coming lessons, but for now, let me quickly explain the responsibility of each component. Serving provides request-driven compute that can scale to zero, and eventing provides eventing and event-driven capabilities, encouraging asynchronous messaging flows. Earlier versions of Knative supported a third component, the build component, the build component provided build capabilities for building and packaging container images directly within Kubernetes itself. The latest versions of Knative have deprecated and removed the build component in favor of Tekton. Tekton provides a richer feature set, including the concept of a pipeline, as often seen and used in more traditional CI-CD tools. Tekton is actually a project in its own right and can be located at https tekton.dev. Knative, as already explained, is installed into Kubernetes and currently requires version 1.15 or greater. It requires a networking layer to be installed, which is most often chosen to be Istio. Other networking layers exist, such as Ambassador, Contour, Glue, and Courier, any of which can be swapped in to replace Istio. This course will focus on using Istio since it's the promoted network layer for Knative. On top of the networking layer, the Knative serving and eventing components are then installed. As previously mentioned, Knative is typically configured with Istio, acting as the networking layer. Istio, in this context, acts as an interface between the Knative components and the underlying Kubernetes platform. Understanding how Istio interfaces with Kubernetes is useful in understanding how the bigger picture works in terms of Knative, and can be helpful when troubleshooting routing issues. Istio works by creating a service mesh that sits on top of Kubernetes. It implements a control plane and a data plane. The data plane intercepts container traffic being sent from one service to another and then routes it via a proxy container. The Envoy-based proxy container is injected into the pod automatically at pod creation time and from then on constantly receives routing information and instructions from the Istio control plane. So, with all of this in place, Istio provides Knative with the capabilities to perform dynamic network routing, load balancing, TLS encryption of data in transit, and traffic splitting, and several other capabilities too. So, as a quick summary, when you deploy Knative into your Kubernetes cluster, you get the additional following functionality. Serverless, eventing, traffic routing, monitoring, security in the form of TLS endpoints, and policy enforcement. Okay, that completes this lesson. In the next lesson, I'll focus on the serving component, explaining how it works and how you can use it.